Welcome back to Managing Users. In the previous video, I've set up a list of users and made preparations to create a new user and edit an existing one. I set up validation, including a custom validation callback, and I have created a user edit form. In today's video, I'll continue with managing users by finalizing editing and adding a user and making provisions for deleting a user. I'll start where I left off, and that is populate the form. Okay, so now let's populate the fields if we're editing a user. Now in the controller, we already fetch a user if we have an ID. And we can use those values to populate the field with. But what if we don't have a user? Trying to populate the fields would result in error because we would try to call user properties that don't exist. Now, there are two ways around this. We could create a helper function that tries to get a property from an object, for instance, the user object, and just return an empty string if it doesn't exist. But instead, let's just create a method in the user model that returns a new user. That way, we can set default values if we want to at a later stage. Okay, so inside the user model, create a method called new and that will return an object with the right properties. Now, if we have an ID, we'll fetch a user just like before. If we did not find that user, let's add an error message to the error array and we'll deal with that later. If we don't have an ID, let's fetch a new user like so. And while we're at it, let's just rename this method here. I will have to rename it in the user model as well. Okay, now let's make sure the get new method will return a new user. So we'll just create a new user class here, just an empty class, and we'll give it a property of name, email, and password, and then we'll just return that. Oh, and that reminds me, I think we set a wrong validation rule here. Let's see, yeah, that, there it is, uh, order. We don't need that. That's for pages or something, but not for users. Okay, so let's just delete that. Sorry about that. Okay, so now we always have a valid user object. So let's just open up the view file and set the field values in the form. Okay, and that's just easy peasy. We'll just go into the form input for name and just use the set value function from the form helper to set the value here. Now the value, of course, will be the property uh, name for the user object. And do the same for email and we can leave, leave the password empty. Now the set value function is used to initially set the value of a form field. And if we have a post, so if the form was already posted, then set value will return the value for that post. And no, that doesn't work. I'm not seeing any values, so I probably forgot something there. Oh yes, of course. The set value function takes the field name as the first parameter. So let's just add that. And that would have to be email here. Now return, reload, and sure enough, they're set. Let's go back to the controller and into the edit method. It's time to save the user if the user form we just created validates. Let's first set up a proper array of values to store into the database. We'll use a new method for that, array from post. It will set up the data to save, and it will take an array of all the fields we wish to save. Don't worry, we'll create that method in a minute. Next, we'll need to run the password through the hash method. So we'll save it as a SHA-512 string. Then we'll just do this user model save and we'll add the data array and the ID. If we are editing a new user, the ID will be null. So save will insert instead of update. And after saving, let's just redirect to the user listing. Okay, so let's just create that new array from post method. We'll make it live inside our my model so we can reuse it without having to add extra code. The array from post method will take an array of fields that we want to post the value for. We already saw that in the user controller. Now it will loop through them and it will return a new array with the post data for those fields. Okay, time to see if we can insert a new user. Let's add Chuck. I imagine his email would look something like chuck at dustplus.com and we'll add a password of hello there. Hey, that's kind of strange. 
I'm not seeing a new user. Let's just go to PHP My Admin. And yes, we do have a new user here, so we're just it's just not being displayed. Let's go over here. First, we'll have a look at the index function. And we seem to be getting all users, so that should be good. Let's just go to the view. If count users for each. Right, yeah, the end for each is here. So I was basically looping here and doing nothing and then just returning this one row. So let's just cut that and go there, clean that up. And let's see if we can see our users now. And yes, there's Chuck as well. Okay, welcome Chuck. Now let's see if we can edit your name and email. Let's just open you up like that. Add in your last name and make sure we're editing your email address and just save that. And sure enough, we have Chuck Norris here. Good to go. Okay, while we're at it, let's just create another user. Another user. Okay, now we can check if the passwords are being saved correctly by just logging out and logging back in as Chuck Norris using our password of hello there and trying to log in. And sure enough, we're logged in. Okay, we're getting an undefined variable error in the dashboard. Let's just go to the dashboard controller and add this data subview is admin slash dashboard slash index. And I imagine we need to create that view file as well. Yes, we do. Create a dashboard folder in the admin view directory and add an index.php view file. And now let's just add a little welcome message there and reload the page. And that's better. Okay, now it's time for the final method in CRUD, and that's delete. Let's go to the user controller and simply call the delete method in our user model. And then let's just redirect the user back to the user listing like so. That's it. Okay, time to see if we can delete a user. Let's just pick the top one. And sure enough, he's been deleted just fine. So it's just me and Chuck left. Things couldn't be better. And that's it. There's a lot that can be added here, like password, string validation, stuff like that. But we do have the basics covered. In the next video, we'll be managing pages. And I'm promising you, that will go a lot quicker.